right. Well, you know, guys, it's uh, it's Friday today. I started this morning. I came in here about one o'clock. I counted approximately 600 to 700 people, not including people in tents, not including people that have gone off for a shower or out sightseeing. Um, definitely very, very clear that the numbers have actually sort of doubled since then during the day. So you're probably looking at 1,200 people here right now. I've definitely seen an influx of people coming in. Um, we've got uh, the Picton Ferry or the Amada coming in as well. So the numbers are only going to pick up for the weekend. Um, so this idea that, that you know the keeps of pumping this thing that maybe the sad enough times it's true um, that the, the protest is dwindling. So I'm not seeing that. I'm not necessarily seeing it, you know, sharp growing and growing and growing, but it's de definitely maintaining its own. Um, today, of course. The other thing that's come through is that the courts have turned around and said the mandates against the police and the army are, um, uh, you know, are unlawful. The media, you know, the sad side about this is the media turned around and actually just accepting that, uh, wanted to make it all about, oh yeah, but there's only a few couple of hundred people, so, you know, what's the big bloody deal there? Um, and, you know, so that was sort of, again, there wasn't any real critiquing about what's going on here constitutionally. The, the downside, of course, is this has been advanced by the people like Sue Gray and Siren are very much invited with things like the Outdoors Party. Everyone gets very, very excited. They think this is actually a wonderful thing. But what they're really not kind of, kind of taking into account or potentially appreciating is that because it's under the 1990 and the way that our constitutional system is actually set up, and that's pretty much what all the readings I've said now, is like, yeah, it's unlawful, but, you know, tough titty, that's the way we roll. So... Again, I don't know why we're doing judicial reviews under the Bill of Rights in 1990. I, I just, I think that's, we, the, I, I, feel, I feel people are being actually ripped off and they're being misled about that and people are being presented as heroes uh, that don't deserve to be called heroes because they're really fighting on a ground which is, can be pulled out from underneath them. And, and I think, what's more, they're aware of this. But, you know, that's just my own personal feeling. Um, and I mention that, of course, because the other thing that's happening right now is the declarations of inconsistency, which going through Parliament right now, so right there in, in, the, in the bullshit factory is the Declaration of Inconsistency. The Declaration of Inconsistency means that in the event that there is a law that's running around that seems to be breaching human rights, uh, it will then be sent to the United Nations for review. So it's actually, and you, and you don't find that actually, you know, it's not there in crystal clear writings in the actual legislation's law. You have to kind of go through it, 92J, I think, which then takes you to the um, Human Rights Act 1993. I've, I've written it somewhere in my piece on show us your badge. So, you know, again, this is actually about giving this... You know, everyone goes on, and, and, and I'm talking about what they believe. It doesn't matter whether you believe or not, but there's a lot of people in there believing that the Agenda 2030 is, is a terrible thing, and these people that actually uh, have gone for the Bill of Rights go, oh, yes, Agenda 2030, terrible, terrible, terrible. But they're actually creating a precedent which empowers the Agenda 2030. So I just, I don't get it, you know, and I've seen a number of times that same fraction, when the, the Bill of Rights 1688 has been present, has been put up instead, they've gone out of the way to have it pulled. Uh, Warren Pike's a barrister at an Auckland University. You know, he's written very, very extensively about the why the Bill of Rights 1688 is a much preferable right. It recognises the the inalienable rights of of uh, of New Zealanders, while it also reinforces the existing um, you know treaties that deal with with individual rights, such as the Article 29, the English Statutes, uh, the Treaty of Waitangi, Articles 2 and 3. So we have an existing Bill of Rights that actually would empower our system and, and we should be utilising but these so-called champions uh, keep bringing out the Bill of Rights 1990 and everyone cheers them on and thinks that, um, that they're doing a wonderful thing but you know we'll soon find out in time whether or not I'm right or wrong uh, but it's one of those things where you sit there and kind of go I really really wish I was wrong but I know I'm not anyway we've uh, had a talk to people today. We've spoken to the people at the adverse, uh, the tent running the, um, basically documenting all the people that are suffering from adverse side effects. We've talked to people who have, you know, been at the end of, uh, of, I hate to say, well, they've been at the end of police brutality. They actually have, but they're actually remarkably not holding against the entire police force, only against a couple of individuals, which again has been, you know, one of those things that our mainstream media hasn't been very quick to report actually out how much forgiving and how much of a genuine intention of that 
over 95% of the people here really do want a peaceful outcome and there's only a very very small few minority of people which of course are the ones that are given all the oxygen and fed because it you know, allows them to justify the passing of new laws and new draconian measures um, so you know that's where we're at on those bases um, we have uh, yeah, we've just been going around and taking a few photos of today of people, that, just their dogs, because again, just had that human touch, and that's been today. So it's, it's been, been a very, very, very long week. I'm going to go home now and do a bit of downloading, and uh, we might go and get out for a swim, and then we'll take it from there. Anyway, have a good day, and uh, this is Ben Virgin, Deadline TV, down live for you at the Bullshit Factory.